At the worst point, I was spending about 20 hours out of the 24 hours uh, sleep. And when I was awake for those four hours, I was either thinking about sleep or laying down. <laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video I wanted to talk about the symptoms of a pituitary cyst. As some of you might know from my previous video in May slash June of 2019 I got diagnosed with a pituitary cyst which was causing hyperpituitarism and I just wanted to uh, use this video to go into some of the symptoms that I experienced and sort of like the things I experienced up until my diagnosis. So I've basically written it all down on my phone. So if I'm looking down, it's just because I'm looking at my phone. So the first thing I want to say is that the pituitary cyst, the neurosurgeon said I prob I've probably had it since birth, okay? But my symptoms took so, my diagnosis took so long to come about is because the symptoms I was experiencing was very general symptoms so one of the main symptoms I had was fatigue I mean you go to your GP um, any type of doctor and go oh I'm, I'm really tired they're gonna say to you oh she's probably just stressed you're probably just overworking and, you know and I thought for me as well it was probably just stress or because I have sickle cell anemia as well I thought maybe it was my sickle cell or my sickle cell was just being really bad this month but the fatigue was the worst fatigue i've ever felt in my life it was very very overwhelming fatigue it wasn't just normal oh i feel tired sleep for two hours and now i feel great i was sleeping for hours on end and i'd wake up feeling tired all my my arms my legs felt heavy um, walking up the stairs was hard. I didn't like doing that. Getting out of bed became a task Rather than just something I was doing it became very difficult at the worst point I was spending about 20 hours out of the 24 hours uh, sleep and when I was awake for those four hours I was either thinking about sleep or laying down so I was laying down maybe watching TV or laying down on my phone but I wasn't active at all. It felt to me as though I had an infection but my body had no physical signs of an infection so in the sense I didn't have a temperature or anything like that. The fatigue was similar to the fatigue you'd feel if you'd had have an infection. It was that kind of fatigue but all the time no matter how many hours I slept um, I would do one activity say like cooking a meal and I would sleep for about four or five hours after that, easy. And I'd wake up, like I remember waking up and being, my first thought every time I woke up was, oh my God, I can't wait to go back to sleep again. I was so exhausted, like it was exhaustion like I've never felt. So when I say fatigue as a symptom, I don't mean you're, oh, I've had a hard, um, week at work fatigue I mean just no matter what you do I'm always tired so it was very it was very weird it was very very weird but also I felt like it was like a helpless kind of fatigue I was like well I can't go to anyone with this there's no magic pill to help me there's nothing that can get rid of this fatigue this is just how I'm gonna be now. That was one of my main symptoms for me. The second main symptom for me was headaches. I was getting very bad headaches. I'd say I'd started noticing them since 2015, so for about four years I was having headaches in my right eye. So it was like, the way I explained it to my doctor, it felt like it was at the back of my right eye and someone was squeezing and stabbing my eye. Okay, the headaches were continuous. They were severe. Um, they were very annoying to me. Okay, so it's hard for me to say, like it was painful, but because I have sickle cell anemia and I experience sickle cell crisis, which is like 
the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Nothing else is painful compared to that. Any other pain I've experienced in my life compared to a sickle cell crisis is like nothing. So it wasn't like I was going to my GP because, oh my God, they're so painful. I need this pain in my head to stop. It was more because, oh, I'm having quite a few of these headaches. Is that normal? Should I, should I get this? Should we check this out or is this okay? And also because the headaches are in my eye. So they told me it was due to migraines and they were like, have you ever experienced a migraine? I was like, well, obviously not because this is the first time I'm complaining about it to you. And yeah, so they kind of just put it down to headache. The, sorry, they put it down to migraines and that was that. The third symptom I experienced, I get a lot of nausea which can be a symptom of a pituitary cyst. I get a lot of nausea and vomiting, um, and the vomiting is quite bad, so I need to go into hospital to get intravenous treatment. There's nothing really more to say on that symptom. I, at this point, my nausea is basically chronic. I have it every day, and yeah, so, I now know that was one of the symptoms. The other thing I want to say is irregular periods. Now for me, people that know me, when I first got diagnosed with the cyst, they asked me, they were like, well when was your last period? And I was like to them, I don't know. And they were like, well, does your period come every month? And I was like, yeah. And then they were like, well what dates did your period come? And I was like, I don't know because I don't count my periods. I never have counted my periods, okay? And one thing with a pituitary system hyperpituitarism is irregular periods or no periods at all. So what the doctor told me to do was start counting my periods and I actually have a, where is it? I'm gonna open this up. I actually have this, um, I don't know if it's gonna show on there actually. I have this period app. You basically just put your period in when you get it and it sort of counts how frequently your periods are coming every month and you can like look back over a year. So I've basically realized in the past year I've probably been having I've been having about half of so instead of having twelve I've been having about six periods in this year so it's just been a year since i've been diagnosed and i've had six periods the neurosurgeon said as long as you're having three that's three in a year that's fine i didn't know that i was having irregular periods because i don't count my periods so whenever my period came i was just like oh yeah it's been a month um when really it's um been more like two months so mine comes every 52 to 60 days <laughs> uh, which I never do but now I I have to keep an eye on my periods because if I have less than three then it's an issue but I, she didn't really go into depth what kind of issue it is because I, I have one and three so that is another symptom of having a pituitary cyst or hyperpituitarism but that is a symptom I had but didn't realize I had because I was accounting and I've never counted since you know I've had my period for like 10 years now and I've never ever counted my period so yeah I on I like I sometimes think back and I think well if I had if I had been counting my periods would I have noticed this that as a symptom maybe and with the fatigue and with the headaches would that have been put together as oh maybe you have like a hormone issue and then from there they might have found something but who knows <laughs> so some other symptoms I've researched about but I don't experience is so visual defects and visual loss I don't have that but it is a symptom of a pituitary cyst because the cyst can press on the optic nerves and it causes your vision to go out as a well result of that I see an ophthalmologist who keeps an eye on my eyes and make sure make sure my vision is okay another thing another symptom I don't know if I want to say this as a symptom is 
unbalanced hormones, so either hypopituitarism or hyperpituitarism. But the symptoms of hypopituitarism or hyperpituitarism is stuff like fatigue, um, weight gain, or weight loss. I don't know if I'd class hypopituitarism as a symptom of a pituitary cyst. I'd say it's a complication of a pituitary cyst, I believe. The other one I also read about is um, problems with fertility. I can't go too much into detail about that because it's not something that I'm experiencing and I haven't done enough research to speak about it confidently. Those are some of the symptoms of a, having a pituitary cyst and hyperpituitarism. I hope it was informative to you guys. It's so weird having a pituitary cyst and it's weird when I tell people because people are like oh my god that's so scary oh it's, that's your brain Rachel like aren't you scared and it's like no truthfully I'm not because the way that it affects me it does affect me like I'm obviously really tired and that kind of stuff and the nausea is not that great and the headaches aren't nice but it's not as disabling as my sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is a very, very difficult, difficult condition to have. And when I compare it to having the pituitary cyst and hyperpituitarism, it the, the pituitary cyst is like a walk in the park. <laughs> Honestly, it's more. It's weird for me. It's weird. That's the answer I'm trying to make out. It's weird for me that I have a cyst in my pituitary gland because I'm like, oh, I felt bad, but I didn't feel like cyst in brain bad kind of thing, you know? I don't want people to get the idea that this is so easy, it's the best thing. No, like I'd rather not have this, but when I think about it in terms of this um, and my sickle cell, I know which one's harder and in terms of the support I've received for the pituitary cyst it's been way more support for the pituitary cyst than the uh, sickle cell anemia. When I went to see the endocrinologist he gave me all these leaflets for like pituitary cyst support group and focus groups and oh you can join this and you can do this and we're here for you and you know pituitary I don't remember all the websites but they have so many like organizations and charities for this and I was like oh my god I've never received so much support whereas for my sickle cell that doesn't really there aren't that many support groups and organizations and there's not that much awareness about it so it becomes very hard and also I feel like people are very empathetic and more listening when I tell them oh I've got a pituitary cyst as opposed to when I tell them I've got sickle cell anemia. I don't know why but that is what I've been experiencing. It's weird for me. That's basically all I can say. It's just weird. It doesn't feel right because I got the diagnosis a month into starting a new job. I worked in A&E and so I had to take, so a month into that new job I got diagnosed and I had to take a month off because so many of my circumstances changed and my managers at the time were very very understanding and very kind and very supportive and I just kept telling them that because in my interview to get that job the first thing I told them was I have sickle cell anemia but I'll work hard for this job and everything so when I got back to work after taking that sick time after the diagnosis I kept saying to them I swear to god I had no idea I had this cyst like I had no idea this is all like so new for me I say the most annoying thing for me is all the doctor's appointments I have I just feel like I have so many it's very overwhelming and it's annoying to me <laughs> more annoying than my headaches <laughs> that is everything guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was informative it's honestly hard for me to speak about the pituitary cyst because my knowledge is not as vast and you can probably tell by these videos compared to my knowledge on sickle cell because i've had sickle cell for uh, 24 years to 
be fair, I might have had the pituitary cyst for 24 years as well. But because I've had sickle cell for 24 years, I know quite a lot about it and I can speak quite confidently about it. But I've only known about this for a year, so my knowledge is building up every day. So I just really hope this video was informative for you guys. Thanks for watching and yeah, just like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Thanks guys, bye! So the MRI brain scan in April 2018 showed a hyper intense area around uh, the pituitary gland. For people that don't know where the pituitary gland is, the pituitary gland is in like the lower part of your brain. Okay, 